Now that we know a little bit about products, let's talk about a very important one. Euclidean space in n dimensions. So this is going to be the set of points x1 up to xn in the product, where there are n factors. And because we know that we can that the product is essentially unique, it doesn't really matter how we write it, as long as we're consistent. And what we want to do now is study the topology in Rn. We know a little bit about the topology on the real line, and once we move an extra dimension, things get a little bit more complicated, so we need a few more extra definitions. But some of the ones will be quite familiar. So the first thing we want to define is um, a closed rectangle in Rn is a very particular subset, and it's of the form It's a subset of Rn of the form A1, B1 cross A, N, B, N, where A, I is less than or equal to B, I, and these are both real numbers. And this is true for all i. So a closed rectangle looks exactly like what you might think. It's just a little box. And we include all of the, what we might call the boundary. But we should make the word boundary mathematically precise, which we will in a moment. Similarly, a closed rect uh, an open rectangle is one of the form, so let me not write everything again, is one of the form open parentheses a1, b1, all the way up to a, n, b, n, and similar statement. So we often draw something like this by replacing the boxed grid with something that's maybe dotted or dashed, so that we know that we're not including this boundary. And again, these are all filled in. Here it's also filled in. And with these definitions, we can make sense of what it means to be an open set. So a subset u in Rn is open if and only if, well, if we recall what it meant for a subset of the ordinary real lines, the ordinary real numbers to be open, is for any point in that set we can find some open neighborhood containing that point and also contained in that set. And that's exactly what we have here. But what are our open neighborhoods in this case? We're going to be using rectangles. If and only if, for all x in u, there exists an open set, an open rectangle, open rectangle, let's call it R, such that x is contained in R and R is contained in U. And this condition has to be satisfied for all points. So let me draw an example of such a thing. Here's a little blob, and I'm drawing a dash so to remind myself that this thing is open. Pick a point here, for example. And I have to find a rectangle that fits inside that contains this point. And you can see that I can do something like that. And if I can do this for every single point, then that set is said to be open. Now, we also learned several definitions of what it meant for a subset of the real line to be closed in terms of sequences, for instance, or other um, more topological definitions, and we'll use the more topological one. So similarly, a subset C in Rn is closed if and only if its complement is open. So 
So in this case, let me draw an example of a closed set. Let's maybe draw one that's a little bit more interesting. Um, this one, let's say, goes off to infinity, but I'm including all of these points. And the reason it's closed is because, of course, we'll have to prove something like this explicitly when we look at examples, is if I look at the complement, then the complement is everything outside here. So I can draw that as a dashed line. And everything out here is open because for any point here, I can find an open rectangle in this region. So what other topological definitions did we learn on the real line that might also be useful here? Well, let's start with fix a particular subset and we can look at several different things for this subset. First, we can define the interior, the interior of A, and let's denote the interior with a little superscript circle, which in LaTeX, by the way, is written as slash circ. This is defined as the union of all open rectangles inside of A. R is an open rectangle. And that's what it, the interior of a set is. Now, the exterior, this is something that we probably didn't learn about in ordinary real line of A, is the following. The exterior of A is the interior of the complement of A. So the interior, we sort of have a vague idea of what that should look like. If we look at, for instance, this rectangle, the interior A should, of course, be the open rectangle. That's a claim. You should be able to prove something like that. Now, the exterior of A is something a little bit different. Let's take, for instance, this open rectangle and look at its exterior then the exterior is everything not containing this open rectangle. So let me draw that in a slightly different color, let's say pink. So that includes this boundary here. Like I said, we haven't defined boundary and we're being a little bit imprecise with our pictures to get the intuition, is everything over here. Everything outside of that open rectangle. And the interior of that, well, the only thing we don't include are exactly these boundary points. So this we would have as being open. So that's something, that's an example of something that's the exterior of a set. Another concept that we need is the closure of A. And the closure of A is denoted with an overline. And the closure of A is the complement of the exterior of A. Let's take a moment to see why something like that might make sense. Let's again start with this open rectangle. In the end, we expect that the closure of something like this should be exactly the closed rectangle. So let's see if this works with our intuition. So let's look at the entire R2, which is everything in pink and including the rectangle. And let's remove the exterior of A. Now remember, the exterior of A was everything excluding the closed rectangle here. Because these blue lines were dashed, we were looking at the open set. And the difference of that is exactly the closed set. So this is consistent with our intuition for what the closure of a set should be. The last thing that we need to look at, finally, is the boundary of A. Now we can finally make this notion precise. 
and the boundary of A is going to be, let's see to make sure that this is correct, it's going to be the difference of the unions of the interior of A and the exterior of A. Now let's check to make sure that, again, this notion is consistent with our intuition. Let's look at, for instance, um, this open rectangle again. So we now have discussed what the interior is. The interior is exactly the open rectangle again. The exterior is this region here, this open region. Um, and if we take the difference of the union of those two things, we're exactly left with this box, not including its interior or anything like that. So, uh, and that is precisely the boundary of this open rectangle. Again, these pictures are meant for your intuition. All of these claims you should check formally.